So think about your target audience. You might have this great idea of what your website should look like, but if your target audience isn't that savvy or doesn't think that's cool, then you should probably you know, take a step back and really think about what they want to see when going to your website. Usability, that's a big deal. Um, a lot of designers, especially print designers, will develop a site, and it's really cool, and it looks really great, but when you talk about navigation, it doesn't really work that well, that functionality, it just you don't know where the, where the navigation is, or it's just not the way it should be. So really think about your users, especially as you develop the site with a developer, or if you're developing yourself. Put yourself in that user's perspective. What is the user going to think? when they look at the site, where are they going to click, where is their eye going to go first. Usability is key. Legibility, that's a big one. A lot of people like to put text over images and make them really small or you know, make them really big and just make sure that everything is very easy to read. Um, you know, a lot of screens are out there and a lot of collaborations with colors and things like that and a lot of devices and legibility is important. So if you go to a you know a website on your iPad or iPhone, you want to make sure that the text is still good. Visual hierarchy. Visual hierarchy is key. It's one of those design elements people don't think about. They think about color and texture and, and scale sometimes, but they don't think about visual hierarchy. Your most important thing, the first thing you you want your user to go to, like let's say the home page or the home button, or a login box, or a subscribe box. Those things need to be visually important. Doesn't mean bigger, it just means visually important. So bright colors, you know, whatever. Make sure your visual hierarchy is in line with what you want your users to do when they go to the website. Speed. When I say speed, I mean loading. Loading on all platforms. You can have tons of visual elements, tons of photographs. That's awesome. I should, I want you to do it. But make sure they're optimized. Make sure your, your website still loads fast. And then platforms and clients. Look at your websites on all platforms. Um, and this is getting hard because there are so many and they're constantly bring, making more. So just keep up with it. And that's one of the things when you work with a developer that's going to be key because they're going to have a lot more experience with working with those things. And there's a lot of cross-browser looking too because some things don't always work um, in all platforms too. Why not? Because I'm still working on my site. <laughs> Um, one of my favorite books is Above the Fold, and it's by Brian Miller, and I actually got to meet him last year at the How Design Conference. Awesome guy. This is my favorite quote from him from that book. It's deliberately constructed white space, not to be confused with leftover unconsidered or empty space, is often overlooked as a useful element of web design. I think that is so big. People don't think about white space as an element of design. That's going to be one of your key elements to make visual hierarchy and usability key, keeping people's eyes where you want them to go. White space doesn't always mean white, though. Here's a great example of white space. This is, uh, this is called, this is flightstar.com. It's built by VE websites up in Champaign. Um, this is a great example of two elements of design. Scale, the airplane looks like it shouldn't be all the way over here. Gigantic in white space. If there was text over here, this would be kind of become more secondary. So make sure you know you use your white space um, well because that airplane looks extremely important because there's nothing around it. That's huge. Negative cloud space. Yeah, think about it. So now go forth. Make awesome websites. There are many tools out there that will help you start your website. And a lot of those are frameworks, plugins, and awesome people too, of course. So how can we make webs website? How can we make WordPress awesomer? A lot of people go back and forth with frameworks because frameworks, you know, sometimes they have more than what you need. But if you want a great starting point, you can use frameworks to get your site up and maybe mobile. And maybe it'll work with HTML5. And maybe it'll work with CSS3. And you can do some really cool things if you start on a framework. 
So 2011 is a great framework. It's a, it's a theme that's on every single WordPress website, but you can use it as a parent theme to build your new theme. You can just change the CSS, and your, Word, your WordPress site is already mobile, and it's already um, cross-browser friendly because automatic built in, and they're pretty awesome. Is that a to be charge? 2011? Nope. It's on every single installation of WordPress. You already have it, so it's pretty cool. Bootstrap, WP. If you haven't heard about Twitter Bootstrap, and you're a designer, you probably should check it out. Twitter Bootstrap is a great framework for mobile that you should tell your developers to use. Because if you use Bootstrap, there is a lot to it, but if you use Bootstrap, it'll be It'll work in all browsers and it'll be working in all platforms already. There's a lot of stuff to it too that's already built in. Roots, Roots theme is a great starter theme too. Well, it has HTML5 boilerplate and Bootstrap put together and it's already in WordPress. And HTML5 boilerplate is a framework that will make all websites be able to use, or I'm sorry, all browsers be able to use HTML5. Internet Explorer can use HTML5. Let's use boilerplate. Now it can use HTML5. It's pretty awesome. And there's some awesome things you can do with HTML5. Zurb's foundation, it's, they have a plugin or a theme called WP, WP Foundation. It's also another framework that is very mobile and has a lot to it. Bones. Bones from Thumble is a great starter template as well, but it's more developer friendly, it's not necessarily designer friendly, but if you use Bones, you can start at a very basic framework and build from there, and it is also responsive, very cool. And then I use Genesis Framework. Um, I think you should always experiment with frameworks, because they're constantly changing, websites and technology is constantly changing. So I've been using Genesis for about two years, and I'm going to start checking other than that. I've used 2011 and I've used Genesis. I have not used Routine yet, but I'm probably going to go to it because it looks pretty cool. Genesis is definitely more PHP driven than More what? PHP driven. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, this is what I said when I checked out Bootstrap for the first time. I was pretty much blown away. It's really cool. Let's check it out. Roots theme. This is their. Um, homepage for Root Theme, and um, you can check out the demo and documentation on it. And if you aren't a developer, just tell your developer to look at it and say, I want to use this because it's like. So, some plugins. There are two awesome plugins out there that will jumpstart your website. Parallax is becoming a really big trend right now. And a lot of people don't know about it, but Parallax is a slideshow um, plugin for jobs for jQuery that usually utilizes the power of HTML5 and CSS3. It is a slider that is built on layers. So if you use Photoshop and you know how layers, layers work, you can use Parallax to make layers of sliders. Very cool. I can show you the data. And then web thoughts. Typography is big right now. You don't have to use Georgia and Verdana and Times, don't use Times ever. And Comic Sans, don't use Comic Sans ever. You can install web fonts, it's a plugin by Monotype, and it'll bring your web fonts into your admin panel. So you don't even have to go out and look for them. You can load web fonts into your admin panel. And if you ever hand off the site to a client and they want to change the font, they can do it. They can just click on a font and say, I want to use this. Um, so those are some two big plugins that I think designers should be aware of because if you have more you know, knowledge of what is available out there and you're not a developer but you want to speak the language, these are some items you can say, well, I would use this and I would use this. And you can't tell me I can't use the Helvetica because I know I can because there's a plugin for it. So, so here's an example of Parallax. This is explore314.com, also built by Integrity. So Jack the Joyer, Christy, is just sitting there. She's on her own layer, not on her own layer. And when you navigate through the site, she kind of moves slightly off in the background. So it creates this really 3D 
version of this website. It's really cool. If you haven't checked it out, you should, you should because I love Jackie too, and she just looks amazing. They did a great team for her. Which side is it again? Explore314.com. And I'll bring it up to you. I want to showcase it. Okay. And then this here's just an example of a really basic um, agency site that uses web fonts. I don't know if they use the web font plugin, but they just use web fonts. And so it just creates like, this is completely different than what you would see because it creates a different look than every other website that's using their standard web fonts that are out there. They're taking their design and they're using the web fonts so that it already looks different in a really, really simple way. But if you use web fonts, you know, your website is already, you know, modern because it's nothing like anything in the last two years, last three years, because everyone is still, you, you just start using web fonts, it's just cool. <laughs> just don't feel like you're confined to that. So before I do this, let me pull up. Um, so this is just an example of Parallax, uh, the plugin that I was talking about. Um, and let me show you how it works. So you see she moves slightly, slightly off. Mm -hmm. They built their entire website on Parallax. You can use it for just a slider, but they built the entire website on Parallax. I need to talk to these guys, they're pretty awesome. Whoa, whoa. Very cool, huh? What's the web address is? Explore314.com. And it's local. We can use the parallax for the slider. Cool. So yeah, I wanted to show you some local. Um, I had a lot of examples of websites, but I wanted to show you some local. So anyone that involved in sites to chime in. So thanks for typing in, that's awesome. Could you use Parallax with any of the Genesis themes, with any of the Studio Press ones? I have not used Parallax yet, but like I said, you need to continuously experiment and look and see what's out there because you're going to get left behind if you don't. 